like you were working on the one for like that week and like already thinking about the next of co- one. Of course, know? yeah. So, like you're like fucking going. And, like it was that that station was probably the fucking hardest. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, because yeah, it was just it was just a lot. What what were the stations in that kitchen? Uh, it was like uh, so basically, it was a bone right in the middle, right, and then this side was fish. Uh, fi- fish and fish entremet, and then this side was meat and meat entremet. Gotcha. And then, like, along the, the island, it was pastry on one side and uh, garbage on the other. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, yeah, and Malcolm trained uh, fucking Corny, who's now the pastry chef of Manresa. No fucking yeah, way. She was there, too. God damn. Yeah, a lot of history, man. This yeah, is a, we're all place. connected all somehow. All connected somehow. Yeah. Dude. So <laughs> cool. It's really cool. <laughs> Yeah, um, when I heard you talk, when I was listening, listening to the podcast the other day, and I heard you talk about Juliana and Nacho, I was like, "What?" Yeah, I mean, like my Juliana. And Nacho, yeah, man, dude, they're like, fucking oh my for God, sure. We go, we go back, dude. dude. That's family, yeah. right? There. And it's like I met her at a time when I was becoming a sous chef, mm-hmm. and it's like, you know, I was super hard on her. You were stressed. The you fuck know, out. I was stressed the fuck out. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's like, and I think sometimes to her it seemed like I was taking it out on her, but really I just wanted to be the mm-hmm. best, like sous chef she's ever had right yeah, I hear you, that's bro. not gonna fucking happen she worked at Muguri's <laughs> like who the fuck you know what I'm saying yeah, so I, but to try is like you know we talked on the phone while she was in Spain and I told her that that would be a place a good place for them to go work at yeah that's why they ended up over there holy shit yeah they had yeah. a meal at Saison which, where I was working at the time okay and uh, I was like fuck I, I would love to fit you both in here but we're currently fully staffed yeah so if 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 I was like, if I was coming to California and I wasn't working at Zizan, I would have worked at the restaurant in Meadowood. So then they went over there. Oh, shit. No way. And that's how you, you know. That's how I know. Fuck. Yeah, it's fucking crazy, crazy dude. <laughs> and you know what? Ignacio was just there. Like, he couldn't get a visa. So he couldn't work. Yeah, right? Fuck. So what he would do is just come in and stage, like, the whole week, unpaid, and just do whatever, you know? And then... I went to the like local supermarket yeah, and I yeah. see him behind the counter working the meat the meat thing no like at a supermarket way, and I'm like what is going on here <laughs> like Shit. you know what I mean and yeah. I'm like no. good for them that they paid him because they needed the money bad yeah but uh, that like that dude should have worked at the restaurant for sure. Like we fucking missed that. Oh one. my god, I, the guy was a can, giant fucking yeah guy. for sure. Yeah, no, he's a badass. So. You working at Muguritz? Did you yeah. work at Saison before that? No, 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 no. no. Okay, exactly. gotcha. Okay, yeah, yeah, after. Yeah, All right, yeah, gotcha. Exactly. So yeah, you're at Muguritz. How long did you stay there? Uh, so I did the first year as a stage, and then uh, after the after your one year there, they choose like uh, twelve people out of like the forty something people that are there. Okay. For that year, we're living, you know, in a, in a house like. Yeah. With, like, so I don't think Juliana and, and him got picked that year, right? Um, because is that why they went to the restaurant? I, so they they stayed. Lo- so I was part of the. So so after the year, you get picked. Yeah. You stay there. You do four months of R and D for the new menu. Yeah. The restaurant's closed. So those four months, you just do straight up R and D. What's the R and D like? It's fucking crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's like you know. Is it like service crazy? Like that's amount of stress. Everything's still. Or is it a little bit more calm? Still, it's, it's a little bit more calm. It, like, and we all it's very conceptual. Like everyone is like, okay, this is the idea. Someone draws an idea, and like, let's say it looks like a fucking Brussels sprout, and I don't know something inside it, and then mm-hmm. wrapped around something. And then you know they'll talk to you about the dish, the con- the concept, and then they'll be like, make it happen. And then you're just, you know, <laughs> you start doing yeah, a bunch of fucking research. Make it happen, yeah. And you just like, you're, they give you like, okay, like this week you're going to finalize three dishes. And you're like working on that shit. Gotcha. And, and it's not simple stuff. Yeah. You know, like you're learning about different inoculations and different like, you know, modified starches that are coming from Japan mm-hmm. that I didn't even know about even working at WD-50. I was yeah, like, yeah. I was like, Kuri Kurikan. I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Yeah. Inulin, all kinds of shit. And were the um, obviously you have your CDC and everything, but were the Not chefs they, there? They, no, they they all they were all on vacation. The only people that were there was the actual core team of Muguritz. Like okay, and Donny, like fucking Javier, like uh, it was all the like OG like yeah. Members. So there's like four or five of them, and you're there with them and like trying to come up with all these. Yeah. yeah, and are they? Uh, how are they? Like how do They're they? Amazing. Yeah, they're fucking incredible humans. Like Danny, Danny Laza is 
like a Buddhist and the dude like he's he was there for 20 years like as Andoni's right hand and now he's actually opening up a restaurant in the Rioja called Nublo okay with like two of two other OG members from Greece very cool yeah all right you'll hear about that restaurant soon for sure (laughs) those guys are fucking crazy so you did your stage you do the R&D you've been picked yeah yeah I was was picked I did the R&D for four months I stayed for like another I don't know eight months uh, training the new like team that was coming in which is where i met juliana yeah. Nacho. So, what station did you work or uh, is there so stations I was, or? so i was the basically like the sous chef for like the hot appetizers okay so everything the first everything on that menu that i we were doing it was all like everything was finger food uh mm-hmm. so it was all like one biters and two biters gotcha uh so it was like the one biter two biter station um and there was five people under me that were working there heard that yeah heard that how does service work there i never been it, there. it's so. really crazy so the service there everything is packed out like everything is like each pickup from fire it, it's like a minute or two max yeah to get to the fucking yeah plane. 42 courses yeah and then uh-huh. so the way so basically they have like this service trays right in the service tray you have two plates and then there's this like little um like uh what, like a coast two coasters uh-huh. on, on each side so when they say fire, you like, you know, you have everything like packed out, like two portions ready to go. You like warm it up in the salamander or deep fry or whatever you got to do, plancha. And then you have to pass on a pass tray the exact portions with the exact amount of sauce uh, in a little pot. And then like, you know, they'll be like, oh, grab the tempura, dust, sauce, box. Gotcha. Everything was like three steps, two steps. Because like they're always like, Ingredient, sauce, flowers. Done. That's, that's the dish. Got you. Yeah. And how does a 42-course menu progress? Like, how do you even fucking... I mean... Do you um, run the same menu all year? No. I mean, so the, the, we have like 90-something dishes that are available at all times, and every table has a different menu. Fucking what? Yeah. <laughs> every table has a different fucking menu. Yeah. It's crazy. So you're looking at your mise en place list and you're like, I need 14 of this. I need a oh, 72 yeah. of so that. Like, I need that. We would that. have this chalkboard and it was just like a list of uh, ingredients. And next to it, it was like an X and then like 15. So yeah. every day you would come in in the morning and be like, okay, I need to prep 15 notosum. I need to prep, prep six asparagus. I need to prep 14 uh, fucking bone marrows. Like, well, if anything, I think, because uh, would they do the thing to you where they're like 14 bone marrows and then during service they're like, we need two more. Oh, my God, 100%. Okay. Oh, okay. They, would, oh, they, would fucking, they would come out and say, numeros actualizados. That's when you know you just, you're in the weeds, you know? Oh. An hour before service, uh, numeros actualizados means like, uh, like actualized numbers, like new numbers. And then it's like, oh, my asparagus cut went from 4 to 12. Oh, cool. Like, I'm so fucked. Yeah. You know? Do you have a guy and your, of your five cooks that's prepping the whole time? Mm, uh, or are they so all in service? We all work lunch service and dinner service. Yeah, yeah. So, like, we get there. We would get there at, like, 9 in the morning. Uh, you know, everyone will be picked up in a van. Your teeth brushed. Your fucking chef coat ironed out. Yeah. Like, if you, didn't, if you came in with, like, a 5 o'clock shadow, like, they sent your ass back home. Like, if you didn't do your bed, they fucking say If you don't make your home. bed. Oh, they would come. And check, check your bed out? House, dude. <laughs> they would come and check the fucking house, dude. Oh, my God. Dude. That's so, you're, yeah. like, thinking you're having a great day, too, crushing prep. And they're oh. like, hey, you didn't make your fucking bed, yeah, bro. 100%. <laughs> what? They would fuck you like that. Damn, dude. okay. Yeah. yeah, so they would They would have, the van would be That's there. That's a school. Yeah, That's a, a fucking university. A fucking university. Yeah. So, I would literally, like, the van would show up at 9. You got to be there, you know. Lined up, ready to go, you know, and we drove to the restaurant, fucking prepped, cleaned that kitchen like fucking five times a day, top to bottom, going so fast. You just like, you know, just going buck. Like, uh, so you do lunch service. So you get there, lunch service, clean, staff meal. Then you get, uh, then you go into, uh, sorry, staff meal, lunch service. Then you get, you clean the whole fucking place again. Then you take a 30 minute siesta upstairs in the other house yeah yeah which needs to be more like a 15 minutes yesterday because if you like sleep too much then you're tired you gotta like sleep for short periods of time and you would, actually sleep uh i would play mozart for people and i would make sure that they slept 
Yeah, because I was like the resp- I was like a sous chef. Yeah, yeah you're responsible for <laughs> yeah, their well being. Yeah, I was responsible. I was like, we're gonna listen to some fucking Mozart. You're all gonna just shut the fuck up and go to sleep. Yeah, and we went to sleep. Yeah, there you go. Not bad. <laughs> I just like. And then you get into dinner service. Yeah, then you come back, uh, you start prepping for dinner service, you go through dinner service, and then you deep clean the whole kitchen again. And you deep clean before you even go to staff meal. So you prep, deep clean, staff meal, come back. And w- and the fucking hard part is that, like, when you're CDP, like, you're, uh, while people are eating staff meal, like, you have to go through the kitchen, and they're doing, like, a full checking of every single item of mise en place, uh, tasting, taking notes. And it's like, and it sucks because by then it's like, bro, we go into service in like 15, 20 minutes. So they're taking notes like, hey, this was a little salty yesterday and today it's not. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, and they're like, you know, re, remake this, redo that. Uh, this looks like shit. When the service starts, is this staggered seating or are they putting 30 people uh, down at once? Uh, no, it's staggered. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Well, at least you got, at least you got <laughs> yeah, that going for service, you. The service flows well, but it's, it's about, it's so all the, about organization. So, so like, it's the prep that's rough. It's the prep that's which rough. Which is the way it's it should be at every rough. fucking restaurant. Yeah, prep is rough. Service is like boom, 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 boom. Like very clean service. All the flowers are like packed out in these little containers. And then you just like tap it. And, you know, it's like 16 beautiful herbs. Like, yeah. Have, like... The amount of stations they have there is insane, dude. Like, the stock station there, the craziest shit I've ever seen. Like, everything's by bricks. And then packed out in bags of, like, 200 grams, 500 grams of 18 bricks of stock of, like, horse head or, like, pig ear stock. Or, like, and they had, I don't know, at the time, like, fucking 25 different stocks. Jesus Christ. Crazy. Horse head stock? Horse head stock. So you were, they were cooking horse courses over there. We had horse cheek on the menu for a long time. Is that delicious or what? It was really good. Oh, fuck but the, yeah. But the smell of opening a cryobag bag of horse, dude. <laughs> so bad. It man. probably smells like the and shit. the lady that would fucking, the, our horse head purveyor. Yeah. It was like this fucking lady <laughs> that would bring that shit in a fucking black bag. Yeah. And it was, the black bag was just like covered in blood. What'd she do with the rest of the horse? Parted black, out for other restaurants, a black market, right? I don't know, man. I have no Jesus, idea. man. She would just come with this black bag full of blood and like the a purveyor horse's of head. horse heads. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the first time that's yeah. been said on yeah, the we podcast. Had horse, right? We had a horse head. Lady. <laughs> yeah. Usually, you have a seaweed lady. Oh uh, no! You know? yeah, no. Usually, a horse head. Yeah, horse well, head. Okay. You know? Yeah, it was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen someone throw up inside that bag. Oh. Yeah. The morning, oh. the morning sous chef. <laughs> I just got, yeah, in the morning, dude, 9 a.m., yeah. you're not trying to smell horse heads. Yeah, and then, you know, you have this bag now with, like, vomit and a horse's head and blood, and you're like, dude. Do we use it still? Like, no, <laughs> Call her back. <laughs> <laughs> She's, got, yeah, it She's like, fuck, now I got to cut up. another fucking head off, bro? Oh, dude, that's <laughs> so gross. So, oh. so you, when you were training this next group of people, mm-hmm. did you know that you were going to leave? Oh, uh yeah, I knew I knew that I was gonna leave because I knew that the job, like the job that they were gonna offer me, like was mm-hmm. not gonna pay. I was already in like hell of debt, like living there. I was we, probably we, like, we all are. Yeah. Dude, I was like probably like I don't know, <laughs> like negative like four thousand dollars going around like drinking whiskey and smoking cigarettes. So I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm fucking, I, I don't, I can't. Like if I took that job and they were gonna give me like uh, what was it at the time? It was like. Fucking like six hundred bucks a month or something. Jesus and I was just Christ, like, oh, dude! I can't live with that. Yeah, like, no for way. sure. Uh, so I I left I left Spain. Uh, I backpacked around Europe for a while. Um, s- fucking came back home and because I went back to Miami because like my parents lived there and I was like I don't want to fuck, fuck mm-hmm. I don't have any money to live. Yeah, there. for sure. You know, I was literally just like sleeping in parks and shit, like trying to see Europe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, and like. Uh, I get back home um, and I didn't really know what to do. And my buddy, Johnny Sparrow, uh, he like called me and he was like, oh, like Bevan's looking for like a sushi at Saison. Would you be interested? And I was like, yep, super interested. Yeah, for <laughs> uh, sure. So I, yeah, I went to Saison and crazy enough, the, my first day at the door, it was also Mike Francoeur's first day who's like working for fucking uh at the harbor house in oh no fucking way <laughs> he was from wd52 that's crazy so first day for both of us oh, all so right me and mike both got in there the same day and just like you know, so like, you worked with maddie then yeah okay yeah i worked for matt oh yeah. no fucking way so uh scott clark was my cdc 
at the beginning of when I started working at Saison. Yeah. And then, uh, and then Matt Kammerer came into yeah, Matt the position after took over Scott a bit. went to do that's luncheonette. Okay. Yeah. Heard that.